Hey YouTube, uh, I'm here today to give my thoughts, reaction, review, whatever you want to call it, on uh, the new Ghostbusters reboot slash remake. Um, not just the trailer, but just my thoughts in general about the whole concept of doing a Ghostbusters reboot. Now, even before I saw the trailer, I <laughs> do not like the idea of them rebooting Ghostbusters and wanting to build a franchise on a reboot. You know, it's not like the Batman movie series where in the 90s that had completely gone off the rails and even back when there was the good one in 1989 it wasn't necessarily the best representation of Batman from the comics. So it made sense to reboot that series. But the Ghostbusters movies don't need rebooting. There was, you know, they only did two movies. Both of them were good. I know some people aren't that keen on the second one. I thought it was pretty good. I don't, don't see the problem with the second one. But it, it's not a film series that needs rebooting. There's nothing you could really improve upon other than maybe the special effects slightly. But th that's not remake <laughs> worthy. You know, it doesn't need it. So it, it just seems like a movie studio that wants to cash grab a director who's too arrogant to want to work on someone else's series so he wants to reboot it so he's got complete control and just a lack of imagination as well that we have to have an origin story kind of have it continue on um now i'm not saying that i would want the, it to be just about the original ghostbusters because they are getting on a bit and you know howard ramus is dead now anyway and i, I don't know see three oap guys for the whole film that's just not commercially viable particularly so i completely understand they're wanting to do a extreme ghostbusters style new team that makes sense to me and if it's you know have it all women fair enough i think it'd be better if it was unisex but you know all women cast fair enough i don't particularly have a problem with that um i did when i heard that worry that i wouldn't connect with the humor because i like i can't think of a female comedian or even comedy character particularly that i find hilariously funny i just don't connect with that humour for whatever reason and I, you know I think most people if you think of female comedy films you tend to think of rom-coms so that was a bit of a warning sign for me that oh maybe this new Ghostbusters film won't appeal to me but I don't particularly have a problem with it being all women um but why does it need to be a reboot why can't it just be that there hasn't been any ghost activity for maybe a decade the original team have retired you know, Egon's dead, Peter's not interested, whatever. Um, but then there's, you know, more supernatural activity starts happening. These four friends, these four women are investigating it and they start thinking, well, oh, this is getting serious. We need the we need the Ghostbusters. And, you know, token black girl, I, I can't remember the, the actress's name, but, the, you know, the black woman is in this. Her uncle could be Winston. And she's like, oh, well, guys, my uncle, he was in the original Ghostbusters. So they go to Winston and then Winston calls Ray in. And Winston and Ray, they kind of train up this new team of female Ghostbusters. Maybe Peter has a, a cameo because Bill Murray doesn't want to do a whole film, I doubt. You know, they, it wouldn't, I don't think it would take too much rewriting of what they're actually doing to have it set in the original movie's universe. But to say, nah, screw those original movies, we want to build a franchise, we want to build a Marvel type movie universe about Ghostbusters where Peter, Ray, Winston and Egon don't exist and never existed, hell no. No one wants to see that. You know, what makes those original movies isn't the comedy, isn't the, the ghosts, isn't the equipment or whatever, it's not the action, it's those four characters interacting with each other. You know, Peter, Ray and Egon especially, sorry Winston, but you know, those three characters, the way they interact, they are the Ghostbusters, that is Ghostbusters. Not just a group of randoms chasing ghosts around. It's that, that, if you, that's not what it's about, that's not what makes those movies popular. To try and create a, a franchise of Ghostbusters where those four characters don't exist is the wrong thing to do, that's the wrong idea. Uh, it's just, uh, and it just seems like such an obvious stupid mistake I don't know why the movie studio have done this. I, th I, I blame the director. I think from what I've read, he just wanted complete creative control. He didn't want to have to adhere to anything that had gone before. He's got all these stupid ideas about, oh, we're going to have ghosts of aliens and we're going to have police and military dancing in Times Square. That'd be a multi-million dollar idea. Nah, you, like, you either haven't seen the original films or you don't understand them because that, is, that isn't Ghostbusters. That ain't going to work. But anyway, so, you know, I had some, uh, some trepidation going into watching the trailer and then I saw it and to be honest I didn't think it was terrible like a lot of people have gone on like this is the worst thing I've ever seen it's not terrible it's just not particularly good you know you think 
right from the get-go people were against the idea of this Ghostbusters remake so you'd think that the movie studio were trying to knock it out of the park with this trailer um, but you know, for starters they didn't reveal this trailer back in December most big movies this year had their trailers come out last December and Ghostbusters was very very conspicuously absent and that was warning bells for me that the studio are worried they they, they don't have much faith in this um, and then they put the trailer out and if this is if what they showed in the trailer is the best they've got to offer then they're in trouble because I mean it's not funny um, it's just you know oh let's go oh no ooh, okay I'll say it next time is that funny? You know, the, uh, I mean, the, the characters, the characters seem likeable enough, they just don't seem funny. They seem like they're trying to be funny, whereas the characters in the original Ghostbusters film actually seemed like they were genuinely funny and just bouncing off each other. In this trailer, they, the, the characters seem like they're trying to act funny, not like actually being funny. The only one I, I kind of liked was the blonde one, I don't know what her name is, but she, she basically looks like Egon did in the cartoon. Um, and she, she just seemed like she's kind of in the background having fun. She doesn't seem like she's trying too hard. She just seemed like she's having a laugh. And that, I think that made her seem like a likeable presence to me. Whereas the other actresses seemed like they were trying a bit too hard to be funny. Um, you know, there's Melissa McCarthy, not just not not my thing. You know, I, I don't, she doesn't make films that are aimed at me. So, I, you know, she, she seemed likeable enough in the trailer, though, to be fair. Um, but in general, I just don't tend to gravitate before, uh, towards the characters that she plays in films. Um, then you've got the slim brunette one, I don't know what her name is. Um, I've seen her in interviews and things before, and I'm just, um, she just doesn't do anything for me. I don't really find her particularly likeable for some reason. Uh, there's something slightly aloof about her, I think. Uh, maybe it's just me, but I just don't really like her. Um, then we get to Black Sassy Chick. And I mean, this is whoa, that's uh, that's some unfortunate writing. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Winston tends to be known as the token black guy in the original Ghostbusters. Winston was never written as the token black guy. You know, he doesn't come in and he's that jab talking his way through the film, y'all. You know, he just acts like a regular guy who happens to be black. Whereas in this film, like, it's like the bloody black and white minstrels show when she comes in. She's like, the power of pain compels you, fool! I don't know if it's a black thing or a lady thing, but I'm mad as hell, y'all! It's like, no one, wants, no one wants that for two hours in the face. Jeez, that's going to get old real quick. And it's not funny. It's, 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 it's very simplistic writing for the character. Um, now, fair enough, it's only a two-minute trailer of a two-hour film. And, you know, there's some... Not many, but there are a few people who have tried to defend it by saying, oh, you, you, you can't judge a film by the trailer, you should watch the film first. Well, I don't think you really understand what a trailer's for, if that's your attitude. Trailers are there so we can judge the film and judge if we want to see it or not. It's no good saying, oh, you shouldn't judge a film by its trailer. Well, yeah, we should judge the film by its trailer. That's why it exists. That's why the trailer exists. Um, but, you know... Uh, surely they've put the best foot forward with the trailer. That that would make sense that they've tried to do their best in this trailer. So if, if, if this is if this is the best, then uh, it's, it's worrying. Um, and I mean, I, I don't think I've ever seen a trailer get as much hate as this. I mean, it's just unreal. The international trailer, especially, has got like five times as many dislikes now as likes. Um, so on the positive notes, though, one. A lot of people have complained about the CGI in the film, but I think it looks fine. I actually think visually the film looks pretty good. I like the look of this Ghostbusters world. Um, you know, some people are complaining, oh, the ghosts are all CGI. Well, what do you expect? It's 2016, of course the ghosts are all CGI. And of all the things in films that are CGI now, and I think CGI is overused, you know, it's just ridiculous. You get to the, the last hour of a film now, and it's just like watching, sitting and watching someone else play a video game for an hour. It's, you know, it's just w way overused, and I have trouble getting invested in it. But of all the things that should be done in CGI, ghosts make sense. Ghosts are hollow and transparent and weightless. All the problems that I would normally have with CGI would work for a ghost. That makes sense to me. Do the ghosts in CGI? That's that. I don't see. I don't see why that's a problem. Um, also, a bit of a spoiler here, but you know, if you've seen the toys that have been revealed, if you've read the leaked script online, the baddie in the film is going to be the ghost 
from the, the logo, who you see at the beginning of Real Ghostbusters walking down the street. Um, and a lot of people say, oh, that's kind of stupid. But I actually kind of like that. I think it's kind of a cool idea to have that ghost be the main bad guy. Um, I'd love to have seen Sam Hain used as the bad guy, but, you know, maybe if a sequel happens, I don't think it will, but maybe if a sequel came out, they could, they could use Sam Hain. But um, apparently at the end of the film, they're going to hint at a different villain um, being in the next film. About, like, what next film ain't going to happen? Um, but, yeah, it's just... And I'll tell you what pissed me off from the start of this trailer. Most people focused on the thing you know, 30 years ago, four scientists. Well, yeah, we all know it wasn't four scientists, it was three scientists and Winston, blah, blah, blah. But what actually pissed me off is that they even referenced that in the first place at the start of the trailer. Like, what, why are you referencing the original films if this is a remake and, it, it, and if, the, if the original films don't exist now in that universe? If the original films don't exist now in that universe, don't reference them. You know, Batman Begins didn't reference bloody Batman Forever. <laughs> you know, it's just a, why would you? To me, it seems like the studio have cottoned on that no one wants a remake and they're trying to market this as a sequel just to try and get a few more bums on seats. And it's just, out, it's, to me, it seemed like outright lies and trying to trick me. And it did confuse me because when I read that, I thought, oh, this is a sequel. It's set in the same universe. And then as the trailer went on, it kind of didn't really seem as if it was, but then you see the firehouse and you see that the Ghostbusters logo has been painted on the subway wall and you think, well, do, do, does do the old Ghostbusters exist then or not? But no, it's, it, it's, a real, it's a hard reboot. So that's just a load of bullshit that they've kind of tried to trick us with and that really annoyed me. Um, excuse me. Another thing that's annoyed me is their attitude towards comments on YouTube and that's kind of part of the reason why I'm making this video just to get my voice heard because I've left quite a few comments on their trailer and they keep getting deleted and I haven't said anything racist I haven't said anything <clears throat> nasty I haven't swore nothing sexist it's purely constructive criticism saying you know the original film it was funny because of you know it's kind of deadpan subtle wit whereas this film just seems very loud and in your face kind of slapstick that's all I've written and it keeps getting deleted and it really irritated me because fair enough I understand they want to do some kind of damage control some kind of damage limitation but if you start censoring what people say you're going to piss them off this you're going to do the opposite you're going to I mean for me that galvanized me now for every one of my comments they delete I leave two more because it just annoys me so much that they're trying to censor me and I think a lot of people will have the same attitude and it's just going to turn more people against the film if they feel that you're trying to shut them down and say no your opinion's wrong we're not going to let you have an opinion on our film well fuck you then you know you just you're just going to inspire more hatred and, and vile to be spat at your film. Um, though at the same time, that, you know, I think some people are going over the top. I mean, I feel sorry for the actresses involved because they didn't write the film, you know, they're just doing as they're told and as they're directed. And yet some of them on Twitter have had some real nasty things thrown at them and it's got to the point of being kind of bullying. And they don't deserve it, I don't blame them for it. Uh, you know, I blame the director and I blame the, the Sony. Uh, you know, I think Sony's greed and I think the director's arrogance are the main things at fault here. <clears throat> um, but it's a shame because this is probably going to kill the franchise now. I mean, we've waited 25 years for another Ghostbusters film. It's gone. <laughs> it's all over now. <laughs> you know. It, it, it'd be at least 10 years before they'd think about making another one, I imagine, in which time the original cast may well be dead, or at least more of them will be dead, and it's, you know, then you've got no choice but to reboot it, but people don't want to reboot, so what do you do? It's, you know, it's just, it's over. You know, you now, you really, you needed to make a new film now that, you know, was set in the same universe, but you've screwed the pooch, you've, you know, it's the thing all over again, you know, waited 30 years for a sequel to John Carpenter's thing, they finally get their ass in gear and they just throw it all away, making a, a pointless remake, prequel, sequel, didn't even know what the hell it was, just repeats the first film. You know, it's so annoying when they do that, when you've waited so long for a film to come out, for a sequel, and they, they do it, and then they just make such schoolboy errors and screw it up, like, good job. Um... So, yeah, my, I mean, I'm just 
I've the same opinion as most people on the film. I don't think it's going to be very good. Um, I was curious to see it, but um, I think them deleting my comments on YouTube was the final straw. <laughs> as petty as it may sound, I'm like, well, I'm never going to pay to watch this film then. I'll watch it for free at some point if I get the opportunity out of curiosity. But I, you know, I'm not going to pay to see this film. Another thing that annoys me about it being a remake as well is that I love that Ghostbusters, pretty much everything to do with Ghostbusters, was set in the same continuity, and that's so rare. I mean, Transformers, you know, the movies aren't set in the same continuity as the cartoon. There's about 50 different cartoon continuities anyway. Same with He-Man, Ninja Turtles. Whereas with Ghostbusters, the real Ghostbusters was set in the same universe as the movie. And then Extreme Ghostbusters was set in the same universe as real Ghostbusters, which was set in the same universe as the movie. So it's all in continuity. And I love that. I love that it was all set in the same universe. Um, and I would have liked the new movie to have been the same, you know, but then they've just fucked all that up. You know, I, I thought maybe we could get a new cartoon series even based on the new Ghostbusters that was, you know, set in the, maybe could reference Extreme Ghostbusters or real Ghostbusters. Now that ain't going to happen now. It's just, why make it a remake? And I'm, I'm not 100% against remakes, you know. I enjoy some, the, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake, the Dawn of the Dead remake. I thought they were fun movies, not necessarily as good as the originals, but they were still good films, you know. They, they were enjoyable and they didn't detract from the original. But then that's because, you know, the original Night of the Living Dead series had kind of gone down the drain a bit. Texas Chainsaw Massacre series had really gone down the drain. So those remakes made sense because they wanted to throw out all that, even though the originals were still good, they wanted to throw out the, the, the bad ones, you know. But uh, with Ghostbusters, geez, it was one film that some people weren't that keen on with Ghostbusters 2, but it was still a pretty good film. You know, need to throw it all away. Honestly. So, yeah, just... Just general disappointment, really, and just I didn't expect it was going to work to reboot it, but you see the trailer and uh... the thing that I did like about the trailer, sort of, is the um, twinkly Ghostbusters music at the start, where it's going, you know, do 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 on the piano. Um, I, I, you know, I kind of like that. I like it. I, it worked for Jurassic World, but obviously this is just a rip off of the Jurassic World trailer by doing that. Um, and on top of that, you know, it worked for Jurassic World because Jurassic World was set in the same universe as the original Jurassic Park films. So, you know, you've got 15 years since we've last revisited that world. So it, it made sense to kind of have it seem a bit sentimental and nostalgic with that music. Because this film's a remake, it doesn't really make sense to have that kind of music. You know, the same way it doesn't make sense to reference four scientists 30 years ago at the start. So even that, even though I, I kind of liked it, even that doesn't really make sense in context of this Ghostbusters universe. Uh, but the thing is, I don't think all of the hate towards Ghostbusters is about Ghostbusters. A lot of it is, but I think it's just uh, people are fed up with remakes and reboots. Uh, yeah. And for me, the straw that broke the camel's back was Robocop. And I'm kind of surprised there wasn't this sort of outrage about that, but I guess because Ghostbusters is a more family-friendly franchise, people are more sentimental about it than Robocop. But for me, Robocop was really where I jumped off the remake train, because why do you need to remake Robocop? It's, it's a nigh-on perfect film. There's nothing that you could update to make it better, maybe other than the scene of Dick Jones at the end falling with his elongated plasticine arms from the building but it's only like a three second scene so if it bothers you that much go back and George Lucas it you know just CGI a Dick Jones in there for that three seconds if it bothers you that much other than that there's nothing you can improve upon with that film the special effects the story everything's great and the remake just proved how pointless it was in its existence by being an inferior hollow, shallow, PG-13 version of the original. And, you know, but people just, I think people are just fed up with it now. You know, it's, it's, it's got to the point where people, studios aren't remaking films that need to be remade for artistic reasons. I mean, back in the 80s, they, you know, in the late 70s, the 80s, they remade Invasion of the Body Snatchers, The Thing from Another World, films like that, The Fly. But it made sense because when those original films were made, it was back in a time where there were a lot of restrictions on the kind of stories you could tell. You couldn't go too far with it, with sort of the, the content and the violence. They didn't have the special effects to pull off these kind of sci-fi stories. So it made sense in the 80s to go back 
and take those stories and remake slash reboot them. Nowadays, you, you go back to the 80s, and a lot of the films, you know, have perfectly fine special effects. Uh, I mean, is CGI really that superior to it? I mean, the, the, the stop motion and the, the practicals in Robocop still look bloody good today, so I don't think CGI improves upon it. So it's just people are fed up with remakes now that don't feel like they're being made for artistic reasons. They, they feel like they're being made to tug on our heartstrings, tug on our nostalgia, and just bleed money out of us with franchise that we love. When you know the new films are made, have got no creative or artistic merit. Why did you need to remake Robocop? Why couldn't you do a sequel set 20, 30 years later? Have Robocop be upgraded so you've still got him in his new suit, not all black, but you could still have him in his updated looking suit and deal with you know what's it like for this guy who's nigh on he's basically immortal now. All the people he used to love and care about are dead, even the ones that he who did still know he was Murphy and you know, like Anne Lewis or whatever. And how does he deal with that? It's maybe even his son's dead by now, you know? So how, how does he deal with that, that he is immortal and he's lost all these people? I mean, this, this is, there are things you could have done with that rather than just remaking it and rehashing the old film. So, you know, hopefully Hollywood will learn a lesson from Ghostbusters and stop making remakes, you know? Why can't you build a franchise for more than three movies before you run out of story ideas? You know, TV shows, comic books, they can go on for years and years with with stories every month, or, you know, expanding on the world, developing the characters. Why can't Hollywood do that with movies? People are fed up with watching two or three films. Oh, now that universe is scrapped. We'll reboot it again. You've got to start from the beginning again. People are fed up with it. People want to see the universe get expanded and explored. So hopefully Hollywood will learn a lesson from that. And hopefully Hollywood will learn a lesson from Deadpool in that not every film has to be PG-13 to be popular. Another slight spoiler that I want to discuss, though if you, if you want to avoid any spoilers that weren't in the trailer, don't, don't keep watching, but um, apparently uh, Bill Murray has a cameo in the film and his character is going to get killed off because, uh, you know, I think it's quite well known that Bill Murray always wanted Peter Venkman to be killed off if they ever made a Ghostbusters 3. Um, now he's not playing Peter Venkman, obviously, because it's a reboot, but he's just playing a character who's going to get killed, but I know it's what Bill Murray wants, but what Bill Murray wants isn't always best, as we learnt in the real Ghostbusters when he got Lorenzo Music fired and had that horrible, that horrible Dave Coulier voice for Peter Venkman that just ruined the character. Um, but they're going to kill off a character played by Bill Murray. And the thing is, in a Ghostbusters movie, you see Bill Murray, you're seeing Peter Venkman. I, I know he's not playing Peter Venkman, but that's who you're going to see if you see Bill Murray in a Ghostbusters movie. So this movie is going to kill off the most popular character from Ghostbusters, basically, on screen. And do, do, they, do they not think that will piss people off? I mean, that's just, I think that's just inherently disrespectful and annoying to watch one of the greatest characters from the original series that you're rebooting get killed off. It's like a big old fuck you to the original Ghostbusters movies to do that. Don't do it. And, you know, Sony must be panicking at the minute because of the reaction to the trailer. So I wouldn't be surprised if they're doing a hell of a lot of reshoots and recuts. And maybe that won't be in the finished film. Because I think, I think it'd be a, a, another foolish decision in a long line of foolish decisions involving this movie. Sorry if this video's been a bit choppy, but the camera keeps stopping recording. And I can't be bothered to start again from the start. So I just keep, you know, so it's all going to be edited a bit, sort of jarring. But... What can you do? Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, next video will probably be uh, reviewing Batman vs Superman when I finally get to see it. Um, so I've been wanting to do movie reviews for a while now. Um, it's just getting my backside in gear to do it. Because there's so many reviewers on YouTube. It's, you know, I kind of think, well, what's the point in me adding my two pence? But um, it's just something that I find, you know, I've so into movies. I want to give my opinion, even if only two people <laughs> are interested in watching it. Um, so anyway, Unlike Sony, I won't censor your comments, so you can tell me how crap the video is if you want. As long as it's constructive criticism, don't be racist towards me. Um, uh, so yeah, thanks for watching guys.